Lecture 15 covers sections 5.5 through 5.6. At the end of today's lecture, you should be able to identify the two processes that comprise the Carnot cycle. And you should be able to understand the implications of the Carnot cycle, specifically with regards to the efficiency of heat engines. For us to begin, let's talk about Nicolas Carnot. He was born in June of 1796 and died in August of 1832. Nicolas Carnot is known as the father of thermodynamics for his first and only publication, Reflections on the Motive Power of Fire, outlined the theory of maximum attainment of efficiency for heat engines. This work, which was published in 1824, laid the groundwork for the second law of thermodynamics as proposed by Clausius and Kelvin. Now, Carnot's work was initially not revolutionary, for it took some time for Joseph Black to first understand specific heats of materials and for the first law of thermodynamics to be proposed. So in about an 80 year period, the field of thermodynamics slowly began to develop. The Carnot cycle is constructed by breaking the heat engine down into reversible processes. And we have the following. The first process is an isothermal heat addition process from our high temperature reservoir TH. Our piston within the cylinder is able to expand underneath a constant temperature heat addition process. The next process is removing the piston cylinder assembly from our high temperature reservoir and perfectly insulating it, such that we have reversible adiabatic expansion. Reversible adiabatic expansion is going to be synonymous to an isentropic process. An isentropic process means our change of entropy is equal to zero, as we'll talk about later. Once our piston has expanded, the remaining heat is rejected to a low temperature reservoir in isothermal fashion. That is, the piston cylinder assembly is placed into contact with the low temperature reservoir and heat is removed under a constant temperature process. Lastly, our piston cylinder is compressed in a reversible adiabatic process once again. Now, let us visualize this on a PV diagram. Going from state one to state two, we have an isothermal heat addition process. From state two to state three, we have a reversible adiabatic expansion process. From three to four, we have an isothermal heat rejection process and from 4 to 1, we have a reversible adiabatic compression process. The Carnot cycle is comprised of reversible processes. Each of the processes within our Carnot cycle is assumed reversible, and therefore the cycle itself is reversible. A reversible cycle, i.e. one without any irreversibilities, will be the most efficient cycle when operating between two temperature reservoirs. The Carnot cycle is the most efficient cycle governing heat engines, operating between any two temperature reservoirs. And the efficiency of the cycle is of utmost importance. This is the maximum attainable efficiency a cycle may ever achieve. No cycle will ever achieve it, but it can get close. And we did note this efficiency by Ada Carnot. 